is screen share. Yeah, absolutely. So now that we got that set up, I'll switch you over to host and then uh, you can screen share. So uh, there you are right. at the top. Well, everyone, um, before we, you know, we said in, inspiration, let's take a little inhalation. So I'm just going to ask you all to take one big breath with me on the count of three. One, two, three. Yeah, spring, spring, spring. Something that I would um, invite you to is that as we get into spring to remember to breathe. Um, this is the element of wood in Chinese medicine and breath is a big part of that. I know it's just to like breathe in, slow down. Uh, spring is about anticipation. It's about excitement. It's about a lot of new life coming. But with that, uh, the invitation is also to like plant those seeds and nurture them and do that slowly. It's not summer yet. It's not even quite spring yet. Although this is the equinox. So happy equinox to those of you who celebrate celebrate the more uh, solar calendar. Um, we're at that mid haven. Well, not the mid haven, but the, the midpoint between where uh, the days are balanced finally. And um, from the whole pagan kind of druidic calendars, we go from winter solstice to Imbolc, where we kind of plant our seeds and our intentions for the year and we move into Equinox, where we actually start to bring that out into the world and we start to actualize what it is we're here to do this year. As we move into Beltane, uh, it's about fertility and growth. And as we come to summer solstice, we have that abundance uh, mentality that starts to grow and we make all the way through to fall harvest. So I tend to like to plan my year out based on a seasonal alignment. And so that's one of my invitations just to start is how do we uh, reconfigure from a Gregorian calendar of working five days a week, which we might have to do. Um, that might be part of our, our uh, choices and lifestyle that we need to <clears throat> uphold. But how do we take some of that intention of a solar kind of seasonal calendar and really bring that into our lives? Spring, and I'm going to go through and do a little uh, slideshow and PowerPoint and just kind of share with you some ideas on some herbs for spring and some ways to work with tinctures and teas and just some seasonal awareness and habitry and diet. Uh, but really spring is about that initial cleanse, right? We think spring cleaning, we clean our house. So right now that's part of that invitation. If there's snow on the ground and you're not quite getting outside, well, how do you clean house um, both internally in your or physically in your home outside of yourself but also internally in those things that no longer serve you winter is about kind of storage energy right so we've kind of come through the end of that where we've been stored up squirreled up with our proverbial nuts and uh, dried fruits and we're now coming into where the first kind of greens come in and there's a ripening there's an energy the birds start to come out the buds on the trees swell and it's just an opportunity for us to start to build up that next dream the next momentum that we have so all right i'm going to start our little webinar here and let me see if i've got this this should be go and um also in the chat i'm going to just play from the beginning I want you to let me know in the chat, what are you drinking right now? Um, and also I'm gonna ask if you have any questions, uh, I'm gonna try and browse through the chat, but if Malcolm is on, uh, maybe he can send them directly to me or we can jump on and we'll do a Q and A at the end. But what are you drinking right now? For me, I'm actually drinking a winter tea um, called Songbird and it's really more of a, a throat tea. I like to drink it while I do talks because I'm speaking for a large period of time. And this is a, Fennel fenugreek was one of my very favorites, gastrointestinal, uh, mucus membrane healing kind of herbs, but also mixed with some lemongrass, some uh, slippery elm, some marshmallow, and some ginger. So just a really nice soothing tea for my throat and for my digestive tract. I went for Mexican the other day and I definitely had like tummy cramps. Um, I know Malcolm and I have talked about eating beans and how maybe that wasn't part of our ancestral diet. And so sometimes, uh, yeah, this type of tea does me well for that too. Call it irritable bowel harmony. <laughs> so what are you drinking right now? May it be water, may it be some kind of alcoholic beverage, or may it be tea? Let us know in the chat and just share with that and we'll get going here. Looks like um, Sonia's drinking chaga. 
And Darla's drinking uh, ginger, apple cider vinegar, and lemon tea. Mm, love that. Love, love, love that. We've got Jenna having rose hip, nettle, chaga, and ginger tea. Mmm. And Malcolm says he actually likes the songbird tea. Nah, just kidding. I got some peppermint tea going on. Yeah, look at all these guys. Nice. And wow, um, Julie's got uh, soda water with cranberry juice and pine syrup. Nice. So I know um, at the Light Cellar, they do lots of great syrups too. Lots of great ways of upgrading water. Something I love about tea, and this is just one of the ways I like to start my spring is with a bit of a tea cleanse. And it might not be like just a water cleanse and I'm not just drinking tea, but I'll make sure that I go out and get a few really nice teas or in my case, sometimes raid my dried herbs that I've harvested and start to blend up some teas and make sure that this is part of my regular at this time of year. So I'm not just getting water, I'm getting a lot of good spring uh, cleansing type teas. And we're gonna talk a bit more about that, but it seems like we'll just keep going. All right, and looks like uh, we're ready to go. So I wanted to start by really just kind of tuning us in. Uh, this is from a Chinese medicine perspective to the seasonal energy of, of the seasons. It moves from winter, which is that kind of cold, salty, black kidney is the energy of winter, meaning that it's the energy of storage and black foods, things like in our herbal world, Romania, Hishu Wu, Shilajit, these kind of things, black sesame seed, black rice. These are some of our best kind of uh, jing builders or nourishers in the winter. But as we move into spring, the energy is of, of wind, right? And it's also of wood. So we've got that, in comes this big breath. Like I said, take a big breath in the spring. And there's the... The flavor is sour. Now, why is that flavor sour? It's because many of those young spring greens are actually sour. Uh, we have a lot of that sorrel, um, a lot of just like lightly sour herbs uh, that are also really good for toning the liver. Uh, between bitter and sour, we get this kind of liver toning. Uh, so this is also the energy of the liver. So as we kind of move into this time of year, think of it as a seasonal renewal. And our liver being our, as I like to call it, the alchemist of the body, uh, does all of the detoxing work, does a lot of the cleansing work, does a lot of the dealing with and unpacking hormones and rebuilding and cleansing the blood. So this, the liver works really hard. And because the spring is, is really the focus of the season is liver, it's the best time of year for us to do a bit of a cleanse. Now, in, in the past, this would be the time to do fasting in the early, early spring or just even the last two, three weeks. Part of the reason why people would fast during this time of the year is actually because they ran out of food <laughs> back in, in the day before we had a berry bush on every corner we called a Safeway. <laughs> but nowadays, um, yeah, there's access to abundance of calories. And yet typically this is the time of year where it's much more intuitive to eat light and to start to get into sour and greens. I know that I am a fan of, from seasonal eating, eating a lot of soups and nourishing broths in the winter. But as spring comes, I start to want to, I start to crave salads. So this is the time of year to just start to get into that. Maybe grow some sprouts. <clears throat> or wheatgrass, um, or think about getting some baby spring greens into your diet a little more, uh, pick out a couple of salad dressings for the next season, or make a few if you like. I know at our house, we always have an ongoing salad dressing that we make, kind of a oil, vinegar, ginger, garlic type base with a few other herbs and spices and other things like tamari. Um, so yeah, have a, have a bit of a, a gander towards that kind of energy for this time of year. We think of spring and fall as the cleansing seasons and winter and summer as the building seasons. And this is this goes back to kind of the, the yin and the yang of the wax on, wax off, karate kid method of, of we're cleansing during the spring and then building over the summer and then cleansing again in the fall, clearing all the leaves and then building again with um, more energy foods and energy things in the winter. So now is a cleansing time. Um, it is the best time to really work on the liver, the kidneys, the blood, the colon. Okay, so let's keep going. As we embark on our 
bring rejuvenation. Uh, there's things to think about, like dietary needs. What is an abundance of, of rich spring greens around us? Is there anything like that? Dandelion is the picture here. I tend to love one of my very favorite spring cleanses is actually just to nibble on dandelion leaves. And this is a really, really simple cleanse. What you do is first thing in the morning, you go out and you eat five to 15 dandelion leaves uh, before you've had any food, maybe with water. Uh, but the idea is, is while well, your digestive system is not working and is not full, using uh, something like a spring herb, like a dandelion can really help to one, um, excrete that extra bile and get the liver functioning better and just really do a bit of a spring cleanse. Now you can eat as much different types of food on this cleanse afterwards as you want. Preferably you're not like, okay, now that I ate my five dandelion leaves, I'm going to donuts and pizza and uh, yeah. But it's an amazing, amazing, easy cleanse for about two weeks. I suggest do a spring dandelion cleanse. And if you have dandelions in your yard, um, great. If you go out walking, just watch out for the spots where dogs like to pee, because <laughs> I've definitely seen um, their dandelions like to grow there too. So I would invite you to just check that out. Um, dandelion is also just a great herb. We're going to talk a bit more about it, but the greens, if you are going to eat them, the young ones are always less bitter and the shade grown ones are even less bitter. So as they, if they grow in the shade, they're going to be a little nicer on the palate. One of the things that's neat about dandelion, and, and I'll just maybe stop here for a quick second to talk about it, is they've looked at um, the chemistry of this plant. And in the spring, it has much more antioxidants, much more uh, of those compounds for cleansing the liver. And in the fall, it has much more starchy compounds. So it actually works as a herb that changes over the season from a, a liver tonic to more of a digestive support over the over the summer and the fall. So we get we get a difference in the plant itself throughout the season. So really, this is the blend uh, thing to do. And and yeah, I, I see somebody said, would dandelion coffee be a good good substitute? Absolutely, but not necessarily as a cleanse. Although it would it would be helpful um, if you were to kick coffee and replace it with dandy blend. Yeah, that's a great kind of spring upgrade to do during a cleanse. So <clears throat> that would be an invitation I would give you would be, yeah, 100%. But the dandelion greens themselves have more of an affinity to also support the kidneys and the blood. The root is much more liver. So yeah, you could definitely go with that if you wanted. Um, but I, I I would say that you can also make your own dandy blend. And, the, and one of the things as a herbalist that I love to share is, is just when you engage with the plants, when you work directly with um, your medicine, there's so much more potency to it. There's an element of your intention and your spirit that infuses into the action and choices you make. So dandy blend would be great. <clears throat> but if you could get out, harvest a few dandelions this season, chop up the roots nice and small, stick them into your oven on the lowest setting with the door slightly open, and just let them kind of dry and also roast a little bit, then grind them up in your coffee grinder and make that into a tea. Wow, that has so much more potency to it. One, it's your own local dandelions and two, your intention and energy that's put into it is gonna make it that much better. So um, yeah, make your own dandy blend if you can. Now, obviously dandy blend's awesome because it's easy and you just put it in water and it's instant. So if you're on, on the go and you're like, how do I make this actually doable for myself? I don't have 14 hours a day to pick herbs, Yarrow. Well, you know what to do. Dandy blend it is. So what are some ways we would eliminate toxins? That's what we need to think about at this time of year. It's really the best bang for our buck to work in the spring to eliminate our toxins. In fact, if we do a two week cleanse in the spring, it's better than doing a six week cleanse in the summer or the winter. You know, it's best to do just a short cleanse in the spring as an ideal way to get going. I tend to start mine around April 1st. So that's about a week away. Um, sometimes I start a little earlier, but I like to kind of wait till after Easter myself because I know Easter dinner is going to be this abundant, rich, yummy food. So I time it around the holidays like that. Same with, with the, in the fall, if I'm doing a fall cleanse, I tend to time it between Thanksgiving and Halloween. Somewhere in there, that's a sweet spot. 
Um, so yeah, think about that. Uh, one of the things after doing about 40 years of clinic work, my, my father always said, Dr. Terry Willard was almost every patient that comes in, if they're for the first time, it doesn't matter what's going on with them. Typically, if they do a detox or a cleanse in the spring, or in this case, usually just right off the bat, when they start doing some of this healing work, it alleviates a lot of the symptoms that people are going through and it helps them notice and recognize it and also work with it better. So we're going to talk a bit more about spring cleansing because that's really, to me, a uh, whole body tune up this time of year is, is the best way to really increase our vitality, to increase our health going throughout the year, but also to increase our health throughout our lifetime. <clears throat> we're finding that people are living a lot longer but it doesn't mean that they're living healthier. Um, a lot of the time we're seeing a lot of chronic degenerative disease follow us as we get into our 60s, 70s, 80s. And, and that can be not a very nice way to go. So start spring cleansing now and you'll be happy for it. So what are the cleansing pathways? There are four eliminatory organs and then we add the liver in here as the detoxification kind of pathway. So when we're moving things out of the body, we want to think about the we want to think about the skin as the largest eliminatory organ the kidneys moving things out through the urinary tract the colon through the digestive tract the lungs through the breath and then the liver is the detoxifier and the cleanser so we're going to really focus on these channels so one of the best ways to do a little skin workout is to do cold dips and then hot and cold so something i like to kind of challenge myself to this time of year and I'm I'm a little bit spoiled because I actually have a pond I can jump into but is to do cold dips and I'm a I'm a bit of a wimp compared to some of my friends I can last a minute in there but after that I'm like whoa but really if we do cold dips for about a minute to a minute and a half it resets the mitochondria in every cell and can help us live quite a bit longer we also start to get a lot more energy after doing a few of these cold dips. So I've found once you get your core temperature back up that, wow, the, the revitalization of a cold dip is amazing. So there's an invitation. You may also want to start with just a little bit of cold shower. This way you can go from hot where you're relaxed and calm to cold. And I always finish every shower with a cold shower or just to finish it with cold, tighten up all the cells. As we expand and contract the skin, it eliminates a lot of toxins. So just working on the skin in general, um, hot, cold, hot, cold, <clears throat> sweat, get out and exercise, uh, move things through your pores. This is the best way to really kind of get the skin working to help detoxify a lot of our, our things that come in through our body. And I will say that as much as it's important to work on the kidneys, colon, and lungs, if we are continually uh, physical, we're sweating, we're doing this hot, cold stuff, it's amazing how much we can actually just move out of our, through our skin and really see a lot of vitality. We do see this with a lot of people who do exercise quite regularly. <coughs> Sorry, I got a lingering, <clears throat> lingering itch in my throat. Part of the reason for the tea is that their skin works really well and it just helps to continually move out those toxins. So kidneys, the kidney channel, I always pair kidneys and liver together. I find that when we're working on the kidneys, we want to be eliminating through the kidneys, but detoxifying through the liver. So I'll usually put those two sets of herbs together. If I, if I know somebody needs to work on liver work, maybe they drink too much or maybe they have cirrhosis or maybe they've got a fatty liver or they just are they don't deal well with greasy foods um, or their um, their pms is really really bad and it's really their hormones are not processing well through the liver then i always want to incorporate the kidneys as well to help move that out so i don't wouldn't ever want to just work on the liver but i always want to support it with an eliminatory channel to move out those toxins so that they are efficiently getting out of the body quickly. Many of our kidney herbs are soothing on the um, the fine nephrons and um, in the in the kidneys, but also they're eliminating. Um, and so a lot of them are diuretics. Things like uva ursi and juniper and corn silk are some good examples. Bushu, hydrangea, um, 
gravel root. There's a bunch of herbs like this, cleavers. These are some of the ones that we can start to work on on kidneys. It'll help to move out some of those toxins. Even cranberry juice or hibiscus are good ones. They're easy. Always working on the colon during the spring. This means maybe a little bit of laxative, um, not just the upper digestive tract. Now, I would typically focus on a bit of digestion and digestive health too. And we're going to talk about a few herbs for the upper digestive tract as we kind of go along. But always wanting to kind of eliminate and move things out. Nowadays, we see that a lot of people based on the Western diet have um, some kind of uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or candida or a combination of the two. And there's really not the right ecosystem living in us as we used to have um, as a, for a strong immune function. And our ecosystem, our biome that lives in and on us is part of our immune system. And so if we're getting sick regularly, typically the first place I like to start is not with the white blood cells. It's not with um, echinaceas and things like that. It's actually with the longer approach of healing the biome. And this might mean different foods as well as different types of herbs and things to work with that. Just like the wax on, wax off of cleanse and build, we typically want to work on the colon in a cleansing building type fashion, which means we're clearing and then we're rebuilding the, the biome back up. And there's lots of classes and ways and things like that to share with you about that. So I'll, I'll leave it there for now. We might touch back on this again, but I'm a big believer that our biome is one of the most important areas of our health these days, as far as one, just starting to recolonize and build up high quality, healthy acidophilus bifidus cultures. But also um, we are what we eat literally in this sense. And so the terrain inside of us really will mirror how well our health functions in the long run. <clears throat> All right. So lungs, here I am with a little, little um, irritated cough. Lungs are definitely that channel. Um, and my body right now, it's just worked out a, a cold a little while ago. It got that residual kind of itch. The mucous membranes of the lungs push out these kind of toxins in, in a large way. And that's part of the reason we get sick. Actually, people think getting sick is, is a bad thing. I would say that when you get sick, you're actually cleansing as well, in a way that you're moving guitar out, moving um, stuff out of your system, as well as when we breathe, we are. So big, deep breaths, um, even things like doing some kind of breath work, uh, whether it's this time of year, I might do a little breath work sessions. Uh, I have friends who do different types of breath work. And it's been, it, I did one with a group about a week ago and it's profound. Um, it's way better than doing drugs. I'll tell you that <laughs> as far as uh, a very natural kind of a uh, high in a way, just doing breath work. Um, and this can be a powerful way to also move out stuff that might be in our deep psyche that's holding us back. Um, often the lungs are associated with grief and trauma. And so this is another way we can clear. Spring is about clearing. What is it that we're holding on to that's holding us back? And so sometimes the lungs are a good place for us to think about working on at this time of year. And liver, last, uh, the, the detoxification organ, the actual organ of the spring. Yeah, we're going to definitely want to put some extra energy in this direction. All of your greens, all of your dark leafy greens work on the liver. Um, all of the things like chards and kales and nettles, as I was mentioning earlier. And anything that has a little bit of bitter to it is going to stimulate bile and help to kind of work on the liver. Some of the herbs we like to think about are ones like burdock and dandelion. Uh, some of the things like the bitters like gentian might be a good one. Milk thistle is more for healing the liver. So we can use that too. But as far as cleansing it, we're going to want, yeah, things like the dandelion, burdock, artichoke is a good herb for that. Um, radishes, spring radishes are a great way to help to work on the liver. Beets, um, all of those kind of things are liver kind of liver, liver roots. All right. So as I mentioned before, how to revive and thrive, we cleanse a little, we build a little. Really simple, two week intervals of cleansing and building with supplement protocol is just 
to me, the best way to do this. And I, I've definitely seen hands down. Uh, my father created something called the Wild Rose Detox, which has been out of stock. But I'm going to tell you, if those of you who know about the herbal detox, it will be back on shelves this year. Uh, we have a new producer for it. I, I have some inside information and I'm really excited to see it at the Canadian Health Food Show this um, next month showing up as a new reveal with new producers. So he'll be back in stores soon. But that whole um, cleanse <coughs> really, really started off with the simple idea of cleansing and building. It's a 12-day cleanse, but two weeks is really ideal. And in my mind, I like to build this into the moon cycle if I can. Now, I don't, it doesn't always work, but when the moon is waning the energies are cleansing when the moon is waxing the energies are building so we might start a cleanse just after a full moon this could be ideal it doesn't have to be the best time to start a cleanse honestly is when you have a couple of days off of work and you can start to really prep your own foods and also when your kitchen is clear of all those kind of uh, easy junk foods that are going to, you know, tease you. You know, if you've got a kitchen pantry full of uh, power bars and bread and and all that kind of stuff, you're, you're going to want to eat it. So clear your kitchen, get a fresh load of healthy groceries and start a cleanse when you have the time. Uh, so we'll get into what that looks like. But simply, we're not just cleansing our diet, we're setting new intentions and stripping away old habits. This is a big part of the tech cleanse. Most of you probably are, are uh, connected to the understanding that we're not just a physical body, we're a mental, emotional, spiritual body as well. We have all these integrated parts of our, our whole being. Well, we want to remember to integrate those parts through the cleansing process. So we're not just trying to cleanse our diet. We're not a robot. We want to cleanse our mental space. So have we gotten in the habit of watching Netflix every night? Um, can we clear that? Uh, maybe we can swap that out with books instead during a cleanse. Are we in the habit of drinking a lot of alcohol or coffee? Can we swap that out with tea? Um, are we in the habit of complaining about stuff? Can we try to um, set a tone of appreciation for ourselves and really look at the things we appreciate? Are we in the habit of having a messy kitchen? Can we swap that out with making sure that our kitchen is clear every night so when we wake up, we have this clean, clear energy to work with? So think about that. I mean, I know in my house now, I, I can't stand our kitchen being a mess at night. I have to clean it. It's become the, the, the standard. But um, anyway, what are the other things you could add into your spring uh, to revitalize and um, thrive this year? So let's talk a little bit about cleansing protocols. So first off, it's diet, 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 diet. This is far more work than taking supplements, um, far more work than making teas and making tinctures, uh, it's really about how do we reclaim um, a diet that is going to be healing. And the things to really look at is avoiding, it's really what should I avoid? And that's really packaged and processed foods, refined carbohydrates and sugars, dairies, some meats, not all meat. Um, I would say, depending on your dietary choices, red meats and shellfish are all quite acidic, whereas things like salmon... Um, are are not. They're more neutral and alkaline. So I would really try to avoid, from a pH perspective, all the acid, really acidic foods. We're trying to get into neutral and alkaline foods. That's why the dark leafy green vegetables are amazing. We're switching around the pH in the digestive tract to a degree to help the biome heal. Simple carbohydrates um, and sugars. A lot of people, I know when we were in clinic once, uh, this guy's like, oh yeah, I'm not eating bread, no problem. I'm doing really good on the cleanse. But he went out to the uh, the receptionist and he said, so um, do you have any other options for bagels? Because I'm getting really sick of bagels. And it's like, oh no, all bread products, all flour products, pasta, bagels, wraps, uh, you name it. So anything with refined carbohydrates. I would even go as far as to say 
that simple sugars include things like potatoes sometimes. Um, and I'd especially go if they're, if they've been processed and packaged, frozen French fries, probably not ideal, even though it might classically be a vegetable, um, probably not an ideal way to cleanse. The other thing is to, to note is that like fermented beverages, a lot of us love our fermented beverages here in the light cellar community anyway, um, but typically kombuchas, are quite sweet. Um, most of the time, especially store-bought kombucha, are only partially fermented and there's a lot of sugar still in them. So staying away from those during your cleansing cycle and obviously beers and wines. Um, the other thing that I would invite is while cleansing, stop taking a whole lot of supplements. Uh, a lot of us who kind of, kind of try to live a healthy life, we might have a little protocol for ourselves like, essential fatty acids or vitamins or whatever that might be. Remember that we don't want to be taking building supplements, even medicinal mushrooms. Yeah, they can be supportive, but they're much more building than they are cleansing, right? They're fortifying our immune system. So we kind of want to avoid, not avoid, but reduce down all of that type of stuff so that our energy and our um, direction is really clear that we're eliminating, we're pushing out things. And this means have good quality fresh vegetables. Lots of, like my favorite meal is basic during a cleanse is basically a lightly steamed or stir fried vegetable meal on rice. Really simple, um, really easy. Uh, trying to get some good quality oils in there. I might do like as far as the fermented stuff, I might go into like some fermented tamaris or a little tiny bit of vinegar in my sort of salad dressings and stuff, but that's about as far as I would say is, is kind of safe to go with your fermented stuff. Anyway, lots of, um, of these types of foods, this diet's not super complicated. You can eat as much as you want. Uh, but the idea is, is just to clear and, uh, work with these kind of dark green leafy type foods, garlic, onions. These are two awesome, awesome things too. All right. Now herbs to support us um, are another way to go. So to, what I would start was with the diet, but then I would usually work into either taking two to three tinctures and two to three teas throughout this process of cleansing, or I might work into a supplement of some form. But, uh, herbs for the liver are things like dandelion and burdock. Um, these are two that I mentioned already. And this is one that we have in our, at Harmonic Arts, our liver TLC tincture, but also our cleanse artisan tea. So these would be two options. I'd be drinking a tea or taking a tincture or doing both. And really the dandelion stimulates and protects the liver, right? It helps to almost squeeze the liver like a sponge in that sense. So increasing bile flow and supporting digestion, but helping with the kidneys to eliminate waste, right? That's, that's the biggest thing with dandelion. The thing also about dandelion that I love is it works on the blood and the kidneys as well. So it's kind of a one, two, three, all cleansing. You could just do, like I said, that dandelion spring cleanse. So that's an easy way to go. Um, and then the other thing that I would, I would sort of whoops, go to is burdock goes really well with dandelion. So cleansing the blood, stimulating the lymphatic system. Something to think about when it comes to cleansing is the lymphatic system is super important uh, part of our cleansing cycle. Um, oh, and I just see a question here. It says, um, what did you say when the moon is waning and the energies are cleansing? And when the moon is waxing, the energies are building. Yeah. So that's from, um, yeah. All right. Oops. So, oh, one thing also about burdock, let's see, let's go back. One thing about burdock that I wanted to mention was that it is also uh, really good because it works on the lymphatic system. It's good for clearing the skin, increasing circulation and promoting sweating. I also have seen people just using burdock in general can help with acne or dandruff um, or skin stuff. We got dry skin, work on the liver. This is something that um, is often forgotten is that the liver processes and metabolizes all the oils for the body. So if we've got 
issues with our oil metabolism and our skin, or we have, um, whether it's too much, too oily, some acne coming out too, or just really dry skin, eczema, this type of thing. Burdock is a great herb to kind of help work with. So is dandelion, but work on the liver. When in doubt, work on the liver. We want to pair that with herbs like our uva ursi and juniper. Uh, these are two great herbs that we put in both our clear kidney tincture and our clear flow artisan tea. So I tend to like to work on kidneys with a tea. That would be my suggestion. I'd also say that uva ursi and juniper are very classic Alberta herbs. So if you're in Alberta, these are herbs that are in the spring, abundant right now that you could totally be harvesting. Uh, I like the juniper berries after they freeze. I find they're, they're uh, a better berry uh, in general. So yeah, the thing about both of these herbs though is they're quite strong. So I wouldn't want to just drink heavy doses of juniper and uva ursi. I would want to pair them with something soothing like the marshmallow or like the horn silk or like the cleavers or the hibiscus or something. I'd want to pair them with uh, other herbs that are going to be gentle. Um, so we're not, we don't want to cleanse the kidneys too fast. But really uva ursi has been classically used for bladder infections and urinary tract infections as well. Uh, it helps to tone the whole urinary tract and really eliminate out all kinds of um, toxins, proteins, uh, things that are built up in the in the urinary tract. So it's also very rich in flavonoids. And I would say almost all of these herbs that are rich on flavonoids, like hawthorn, um, like the, the uva ursi, uh, like the hibiscus I mentioned already, even just your oranges and um, anything with bright colors typically has a lot of protective flavonoids. Those work on a really dense capillary bed tissues. So kidneys, perfect. Uh, liver, perfect. Very dense capillary beds where we want to get toxins out of those. Flavonoid rich foods are amazing. So part of the reason why we're attracted to such like colors in our food is because intuitively we want these high flavonoid, immune protective, antioxidant rich foods. So if you find yourself, you know, looking at red gummy bears and you're like, wow, they look so great. I think it's because your mind thinks that they're flavonoid rich super berries. <laughs> so uh, anyway, okay, we'll just keep moving along. When we're working on the liver and the kidneys, it's also good to support the digestive tract. So if I were doing three tinctures, I would usually do a cleanse where I've got a herbal bitters or a digestive tincture, a liver tincture, and a kidney tincture. Um, those would be the three I'd work with, but I typically want to switch that up a little bit. I'd want a digestive tea and a digestive tincture, and I'd want a kidney tea and a liver tincture. That's typically how I would, would work. Although, um, yeah, there are some great, great teas. Our cleanse tea is amazing that way for liver and digestive tract, but I tend to want to focus on something like a herbal bitters as a tincture because I can feel it right away. It goes right into my body quite quickly. So that is, uh, that's where I like to work. Meadowsweet is one of the best herbs in my mind for working with upper digestive tract. And this is for calming and balancing an overactive digestive system. Uh, really, we're working with the gastric juices. It helps to balance out um, the stomach acid. Uh, H. pylori, it helps to kill. It really works with the upper digestive tract to help with things like heartburn and GERDs and all these kinds of things. But also it has a little um, salicylic acid in it too. So it does work with pain and digestive cramping and gastrointestinal kind of intensity and, and tension when there's spasms or somebody with a little bit of irritable bowel, um, Meadowsweet can help quite a bit as well. I hear this. Come on, about 30 minutes, okay? My son's just asking when I've done. Gentian. Um, gentian is another one of these really awesome bitter herbs that stimulates bile flow and assimilates, uh, helps assimilate nutrition. I think it's king of the bitters, although I, I'll say, um, yeah, I think gentian is one of my, and you know, king gentian. It grows around here up in the mountains and I just love to tune in with it. 
Uh, it's it's a pretty powerful, powerful herb. It's an easy one to get in the health food store, but also to uh, find in a lot of these kind of tinctures like our, our bitters um, and that type of thing. It helps to eliminate um, toxins through the bile and really just stimulate the liver as well as um, kill pathogens in the digestive tract. So good supportive digestion. Um, yeah, herb. There we go. I would say that um, things like ginger are also really good for the digestive tract. Anything for kind of bloating and gas like fennel is an, another one that we'd want to think about in this in this case. Peppermint, if we have kind of upper digestive stuff, I, I saw somebody say they were drinking peppermint tea. This is a good one, obviously, after a meal, but just really um, another one we might want to add in is some of those mints. Carminative spices, um, if we are going into a cleanse, we may want to work with different spices. A lot of the chai spices, for example, the nutmeg, cinnamon, uh, fennel, ginger, those are all spices that are going to work on digestion as well. So things like that, um, adding to our food, a lot of spices will work with the digestive challenges. One of the kind of old world wisdoms is adding and pairing various herbs with foods in order for us to digest them better. Classic example is lamb and mint sauce or cranberry and turkey or uh, um, applesauce and pork. You know, those are classic for hard to digest proteins. Even um, in Italian pasta, there's always marjoram and basil and oregano and all of these herbs to help work with that, right? So think about your herbs and spices as part of your digestive protocol. And when you're getting creative with your foods, um, invest in a little bit of a spice pantry if you don't have a good one already. Okay, so let's look at the microbiome. We wanna kill pathogens. This is another area for cleansing. Uh, we do a parasite tincture, and this is something that uh, is is our one of our kind of best sellers. A lot of people like to work with some of that pathogen killing herbs walnut um this tree is amazing i mean it 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 um puts in the jugalone into the earth and kills everything around it so that it has just walnut in the area <clears throat> it doesn't kill our good microbiome if we take it in shorter periods of time but if you just constantly take high volume black walnut probably will. Something to remember mm -hmm. that anything that's antiparasitic, antibacterial, antiviral is anti-life. So if you take high volumes of these for long periods of time, they're not good. But if you work with them in a cleanse, perfect time. Hence why we take out a lot of our building supplements. We're not trying to take acidophilus bifidus at the same time as we're doing microbiome cleansing. Um, we're more trying to clear and then recolonize, rebuild um, support and use the digestive system and the Diet is a constant throughout that process. So black walnut's a good one. Um, so is wormwood. Uh, these are good for supporting liver and also um, lower digestive tract as far as parasites and um, bacterial overgrowth that is not ideal. Uh, there are herbs like padarco that I like to look at. Um, that's one that's in our cleanse tea. That's a really good one in that, in that blend. You can get into some of the laxative herbs like turkey rhubarb and cascara sagrada. Um, these are great herbs as well, but just being careful with these kind of herbs um, that you don't want to take too much because you'll know right away. <laughs> I don't recommend herbs like senna. Senna is another one of these uh, laxative herbs that is harder on the digestive tract. So just things to think about. Um, but I would, from a gentle cleansing perspective, I'd be looking at, again, things like onions, garlic, simple, simple things like that. Um, there's a classic blend called fire cider, which is an immune blend, um, but it's also got like horseradish and garlic and onions and ginger. Uh, that's, that's great for that biome killing uh, or, or really killing out pathogens as well. So you may want to look at stuff like that. Um, what else? I would, I would say thyme and rosemary are also two good herbs that can work on the microbiome cleansing as well. So just think about what it is that you might want to um, kind of incorporate into your foodscape as well as potentially take something like a parasite purge throughout that cleansing time. 
All right, so if we're cleansing with tinctures, I mentioned four specific tinctures here. Um, the Parasite Purge, the Liver D TLC, the Kidney Clear, and the Herbal Bitters. We could take all of these or three of these. I would, again, want to pair the liver and the kidney for sure together. And my typical suggestion would be to do the, if we're looking at, we've got, we know we have parasites or we have lower intestinal stuff, I'd go with the Parasite Purge. But if it's often that we get like upset digestive tract or certain foods don't feel right, I would always go with the digestive bitters. Um, protocol is really simple, two to three droppers twice a day of each of these blends and typically five minutes before a meal. I like to time a blend like this to last me two weeks in a cleanse. So if you get, um, if you're doing this 50 mils, you want to be doing about 25 mils every week, um, which means, you know, you're looking at about, yeah, four or four mils a day. So, okay. Um, very simply. And that seems like a lot of tincture, um, but it's, it's one of the things that I've noticed is most people chronically underdose their tinctures and their teas. Uh, people think, wow, I just had a nice cup of tea. That was great. Well, in most protocol for tea, three cups of tea a day is probably the right amount of almost any like cleansing tea. And same with tinctures, a couple of droppers full twice a day, maybe even three times a day. If we're really just trying to clear and cleanse. Okay, let's talk about some teas. Um, these are the three teas that I mentioned, the Calm Belly, the Clear Flow, and the Cleanse. The Cleanse tea is my go-to for cleansing right off the bat, but I find one tea is not enough. It's nice to have a blend and mix them up. We also have um, one called Sea Breeze, which is a great spring tonic tea. It's more electrolyte rich, and I consider it more of a building tea, but it has some cleansing qualities to it as well. So that's something to really think about. Um, how do we start to build a tea protocol in? And it's a good place to invest in the spring is into a bunch of nice teas for you to just keep drinking and make that your choice of beverage. If you have good quality tea, you probably aren't going to reach for the coffee or the soda or the um, booze or whatever it is you you have as well. All right. Um, now let's talk about building for a minute. Uh, some of the things to think about when it comes to building is that similar diet that we talked about. Um, and I mentioned before, I sort of mentioned like 20% acidic foods and 80% neutral and alkaline foods, um, more of those leafy greens, more of those rich things when it comes to building. We're like, we're wanting to add in more mineral rich foods, more inulin and prebiotics, more nuts and eggs and all these and mushrooms and seaweeds and things that are going to kind of our building. Uh, we can start to, to add in more fermented foods. This is where we might get into like kefirs and we might get into some more sauerkrauts and get into a lot more of these building biome foods right so the second half of our cleanse we're going to want to to just really revitalize the digestive tract and add more of these we might start to also put in our supplements at this point where it's if we are taking um these kind of these type of things if we're not just doing a whole foods diet and we know we need a little more support yeah this is when the essential fatty acids come back in this is when maybe a little extra, uh, just a little extra B vitamins. In my case, I find B vitamins work really, really well. Um, I eat great, but you know, if I, my nervous system runs fast. And so um, a little bit of extra B vitamins can be quite supportive for um, for my body. So that's when I'd start adding those in. Follow a uh, one week of, of kind of really in conjunction with building herbs, you know, I'd say one, two weeks, actually. It says one week here, but two weeks of building is ideal in my mind. Always making sure we're doing uh, a lot of liquids while we're building too. Um, staying hydrated, lots of juices, lots of um, of kind of smoothies and good quality teas. And so we've got two teas that I'm going to mention, the Seabreeze and Adapt. Um, those are two that we consider more building teas. And I also want to talk about seaweeds. Seaweeds are definitely uh, super mineral rich. 
vital enhancing foods. You can do them during your cleanse, but really if you want to be building up um, and you don't want to take a supplement, this is one of the best ways to get a lot of uh, minerals into the body anyway, uh, is, is through seaweeds. Nori is super high in iron, uh, can be really good. I know women who are low iron, uh, this is one of the best herbs that they can start to work with. It's high in protein, it's high in iron. It's kind of a really building nutritionally packed seaweed. And of course, it's what you get with sushi. Uh, but you can also get those little nori snacks. Um, if you are, try to get an organic one and one that doesn't have a bunch of uh, kind of garbage in it. Uh, those are good. Bladderwrack is another great seaweed. Um, I would say that that is a <clears throat> favorite of ours for like metabolism rebalancing. So people who are hypothyroid or just, and they're not on supplements, obviously, if you're um, if you are on thyroid medications, you want to be careful with overstimulating and rebalancing the thyroid naturally. You need to kind of pair that with your doctor to just make sure that you're doing that in tandem. Um, so your supplements aren't overcharging you, which I've seen people have had, this is a challenge that they can become hyperthyroid because they're taking the bladder rack and they're taking their, their supplements, their, their T4s. So anyway, be careful with that. But if you are somebody who's feeling a little sluggish and slow, uh, and you need a little kick in your metabolism, bladderwrack is a great herb to kind of work with that. It's got extra iodine in it. It's got fucoidin in it, which is a, a super, um, it's like, it's a polysaccharide that's similar to what's in medicinal mushrooms. Fucoidin works on the immune system as, an, as a modulator. It's just a really powerful, um, yeah, way to just gently support the body. I would also say it's supportive of healthy endocrine system. So not just the thyroid, but all through the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the adrenals, all the way through, just really supporting a better endocrine flow and function. Uh, this means something like our sea veg blend is just a great way to sprinkle that on your food. Um, or we do a, a tincture called BioShield, which has two different seaweeds in it, um, two different adaptogen herbs, burdock, of course, for a little liver um, support, two medicinal mushrooms and two ginsengs. So yeah, it's a good way to, it's got the American and the Eleuthero. Bile shield's pretty awesome. It's really for protecting the whole biome, the outer biome from EMFs and radiation and, and just really healing the body in a gentle way. So you might also want to start to include adaptogens. Now, you probably are all fairly familiar with adaptogens uh, by now. If you've been taking any class of the light cellar, uh, everything from the Hishu Wu and the Shilajit and the Maca to like the Eleuthero and the Ashwagandha and the Ginseng to the Rhodiola to the um, Shizandra. These are all great herbs for building phase, right? So notice again, we want to kind of really strategically now we start to include all these. So we don't just take adaptogens haphazardly all the time. We want to pair them into an effective strategy for rebuilding and re like supporting our body in that way. So we do a tea called Adapt. Um, that's a great one that has both Eleuthero and Ashwagandha in it. Uh, Eleuthero is also in the BioShield um, tincture, which is kind of an adaptogen type based blend as well. And I would consider this whole category of herbs building in that sense and supporting just a healthier immune system. I love Eleuthero. It's the most neutral of the, the ginseng family. It's not true ginseng. Um, it's in the, in the same family as Sarsaparilla, the Aurelia family, um, same family as Devil's Club, same family as ginseng. Um, and that's really just a good one for regulating the adrenals and supporting because it's neutral has a really gentle flavor and just really supports the whole overall nervous system and cardiovascular system. So that and ashwagandha is another one that's a little more yin. It's not quite neutral. It's more uh, yin, whereas a lot of adaptogens are quite young. So this is a good one for people to be able to take at nighttime as well. Uh, it doesn't stimulate the body. It more helps to balance and create better sleep and just promote a calm nervous system and just build a resilience to stress. So in general, ashwagandha has become one of the more popular herbs in our Western world because most of us are pretty high strung and pretty wired high and actually sleep 
is one of the biggest issues of our time now we're starting to see versus just stress. It's actually the fact that we're stressed and we don't know how to turn off. Um, and so a lot of people don't sleep well, myself included. Um, and that's just, yeah, something to think about. Um, adaptogens can be, um, if you have really stimulating ones, can be uh, too much at nighttime. Better to have things like ashwagandha. Shizandra is a good one too in that way. Rhodiola is fairly good in that way too. Okay, and reishi, of course, would be a great one. So nutritive herbs like nettles, uh, lemon balm, uh, all of your green leafy herbs. These are great, great spring nutrition. I would want to add more of that kind of thing into the diet. Uh, yeah, spring nettles is a big thing. Um, something I like to do is harvest a lot of nettles. I steam them and then I vac pack them. And then they're like vac packed spinach packs for us to eat um, throughout the year. But nettles is probably one of my favorite ways to cleanse and build in the spring. They can do kind of both. They help a lot of elimination, but also revitalize and remineralize the body. Lemon balm is one. These are both in our sea breeze tea. It also has spearmint um, and a little bit of mugwort. Um, these are some great, just great herbs to just gently work with the body in spring building and revitalizing. I like to make an iced tea out of this kind of blend too, as the summer months get on. So we'll make a hot tea, cool it down, let it sit overnight with the herbs in it. So it gets more of those minerals. And then as a cold infusion, we can then filter that off. And if we are doing a little bit of honey or lemon, uh, that can be a great one in there as a nice cold tea. Okay. Um, so yeah, some of the things we talked about really BioShield is a tincture that we use to really support the whole, well, protect the BioShield um, uh, from both toxins, but also to build and support the adrenals and the, the body and nourish it. Sea Breeze is more that electrolyte rich, mineral rich uh, tea that is a spring favorite of ours. And Adapt is something I would maybe do in the winter as well. Um, this is more of a building thing, again, with the cleansing and the building in the winter. Adaptogens would be one of the best, best herbs I would do that way. Um, can lemon balm, this is a question that came up, can lemon balm interfere with the thyroid if one has issues? Uh, not gentle like a tea. If you're doing, um, like, lemon balm is used with hyperthyroid to a degree, um, to calm down uh, over metabolism. But if you're doing lemon balm as a gentle tea, it's no problem. Uh, it's a, it's definitely quite, quite gentle. Um, but yeah, so I wouldn't be too concerned that way unless you're, there's like um, taking in large, large volumes. These herbs are quite, especially things like lemon balm, it's quite gentle. Um, but it's, it's, it's worth considering. Um, yeah, if you're overdoing any of that kind of stuff, and that's sort of one of the things about the herbal path that is often maybe not talked about enough. It's that it is quite a gentle middle road path. We're not looking to have massive actions in short periods of time. We're looking to gently support the body and nudge it in the right direction, right? This is very different from the way our allopathic medicines can work, which is quite strong actions in short periods of time. Now, there are some herbs that do that, but... Typically, if we're doing that, we're either overdoing it or we're taking the wrong herbs. I mean, things like shilajit, I've mentioned a couple of times now, that herb is, or that, it's really a mineral pitch, but it's kind of, it got a real claim to fame in the last, I'd say, year. It's become super popular. And the reality is, is it's uh, a herb that really not everybody should be taking. Not everybody should be doing shilajit. It's, it's, was classically in India used one cooked down with warm milk, but also used for like 60, 70, 80 year olds who were malnourished, not for like 20 year olds that just wanted to uh, rock out a little better. So just, just, you know, some of those really potent ones to be careful with, but lemon mom, I wouldn't be too concerned about that way unless you're taking a lot of it. Okay. Um, yeah. Something else we might want to add into our building is medicinal mushrooms. Uh, medicinal mushrooms are a great way to fortify the body. Now we've talked about this. I could talk about them for 
days. In fact, I think I do in some sometimes, but um, you know, so I'm not going to go deep into each individual mushroom, but just think about things like uh, reishi is strengthening the body, really grounding and fortifying, helping the detoxification pathways, dealing with stress, uh, working with insomnia, calming down the heart, calming down the breath, calming down the mind, right? And chaga being much more antioxidant and just really regenerative for the whole body. It's got a lot of really awesome chemistry. Chaga helps to stabilize blood sugars, but also has like just really neat things like germanium in it and a lot of zinc and stuff that can both protect the immune system, but also lightly, gently help to cleanse and kill some pathogens along the way. Turkey tail to me is the most microbiome kind of friendly mushroom. Even though reishi works really well on the microbiome too, we find that turkey tail has that extra capacity to just support gut health as well as liver health. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of the regenerator. You'll notice turkey tail in the wild anyway, it grows on almost any kind of wood. It has this really regenerative quality. It can handle all kinds of different types of of um, compounds and helps to work to effectively modulate the body that way. Cordyceps being a much more energizing mushroom, opening up the bronchioles, getting better oxygenation, fortifying kidney, adrenal, and liver health too. Uh, there's a lot more to cordyceps, but we'll leave it there. And lion's mane, I'd say is not the most building mushroom other than the way that it works with the nervous system and clarity mentally in that sense. So I would typically suggest people they're looking to use medicinal mushrooms as part of their building protocol, work with the five mushroom blend or some of the individual mushrooms in capsule powder or tincture form. My favorite is obviously probably no, the powder, because I find um, it's, it's the most bang for your buck and you can put it in all different ways, but not everybody can easily work with the powder. So we might want to work with something like the tincture. Uh, that's another way. I'm just going to get my light. It's... All right. It's getting darker here. So, yeah, so I would be looking at uh, functional mushrooms like reishi and chaga and turkey tail as my primary ones to go to for building and cordyceps and lion's mane being more secondary for whether it's adrenal support or mental support that we're looking for. But yeah, typically I'd go with a five mushroom blend. And yeah, oh, that's it, that's it, that's my whole slideshow. So tonight's a bit shorter. Um, I just really wanted to kind of tune in with you on some of these ways in which we can cleanse and build and just think about how we might focus our spring energy into uh, finding the right type of uh, path forward for the rest of the season. So what are your intentions? I would write down in the spring, what is what do you hope to harvest in the fall? What seeds do you need to plant now in order to create that kind of abundance as you go through the season. So the last couple of last slide I have here is just on our herb gathering. I wanted to um, invite you to the Vancouver Island Herb Gathering. Uh, this is our, geez, I think it's our sixth one now um, happening this summer. <clears throat> if you are interested in getting out to the island, connecting with me and a bunch of other great herbalists on NS Free Farm, please check that out. That's something that's happening very soon. Um, yeah, in June, early bird tickets. I think there's like a few left as of the recording of this. Um, but we'll also make sure that uh, we can get you some coupon codes. If you um, talk to Malcolm at the light seller, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get him a coupon code for 25 bucks off the regular tickets or something like that. But yeah, um, check out herbconference.com. We do another one in the fall. Uh, this is, and really it's an online one, usually in November. Uh, but this is something, tune into your community, uh, find things that, that will stimulate your mental growth and, and learning around plant medicine and all of that kind of stuff. So you can also learn more from Harmonic Arts at harmonicarts.ca or follow us on Instagram and all these places. And we've got lots of that kind of thing to share with you. And I, I know that we're a little short. We got a bit more time. If you guys want to ask any questions, if you have any thoughts, you're welcome to jump up on stage and, and ask them or put them in the chat. Uh, I just wanna, I'm gonna stop the screen share there um, and just let you know that this time of year is one of my favorites. I really invite 
Um, one of the things you can start to do too is as you start to tune into the natural world, one of my favorite kind of first things to do in the spring is to start nibbling on some of the spring greens and get really curious on, on what's growing in your yard, what's growing in the wildlands as they come up, spend some time with that. Um, that's a big part of my cleansing process too, is just actually getting outside more, clearing and being tuned in with the natural world. Okay. Um, yeah, feel free to post them here in the comments if you got questions. Otherwise, um, yeah, I just really appreciate you. Um, know that there's, if there's questions in the, if you have, if you send questions in, um, we'll try to get them too. Uh, also, you'll get access to the slides for sure. I'm going to send those over to Malcolm right away. Um, so he's got them as well as the recording. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you all. May you have a wonderful nourishing spring. And I, I hope that as you kind of go forward with this season, you think about how can I best strategize and set myself up for years to come with good health and vitality. All right. Thank you all. I guess I'm going to sign out. <laughs> Cheers for now. May the forest be with you. Roo.